throwing, uh, which several of them are down with Patrick, and then <clears throat> and then um, in, in Texas. So it, it gives gives the guys a little more time away from here. But at the same time, getting some of their uh, off season evaluation work done um, and and the opportunity to move forward into this next season. Um, as far as Rasheed Rice goes, his situation, I'm leaving that like we've done uh, most of these just uh, for the law enforcement part of it to take place. And um, and then we'll go, we will go from there uh, with that. Um, uh, so uh, you can, you can hold your question. I have had an opportunity to talk to Rasheed. Uh, so I, um, and and I'm not going to obviously get into that, but it. But anyways, that that part <clears throat> that part has been, <clears throat> excuse me, has been um, um, has been gone through. So, anyways, well, really, with that, times times yours here. Thanks, Coach. Let's go ahead and start with Matt Derrick. Hey, Coach. A um, couple of quick questions for you. One, just a housekeeping question. You mentioned at the combine that Ken Flagel had retired. Um, any other changes on the coaching staff? Yeah, so that's a, a good point, Matt. So Ken Flagel did retire. Uh, we were able to move Rod Wilson into that position. Um, Alex Whittingham, likewise, will take a little bit bigger role from his position. We hired uh, Louis Adazio um, and uh, uh, that quality control position there um, on defense and Louie's got a bunch of experience uh, coaching. He also adds a flavor that he's been an offensive coach, a line coach, and um, um, at the major college level. And, and that'll give us uh, some good uh, productive information for, for the defense going forward. So um, able to add good, good quality in, into the mix here. We'll go next to Adam Teicher. <laughs> Hey Andy, um, I know you, uh, you you talked about Rasheed Rice's uh, legal situation. I'm not asking you about that. I'm asking about his football situation. Just curious what his status is right now. Is he participating as you guys get this started? And will he be participating when you move uh, into the next phase and move it back to Kansas City? And uh, Sid, I'll have another question as well. Yeah. So this, <laughs> there's no, there's no real participation other than by zoom. So he'll participate in that. Um, uh, but other than that, um, we don't have anything going on here, uh, that he would be involved with. Um, so to answer your question, he's participating in the zoom. Okay. Do you, do you... Uh, and again, just a reminder on this, it, it's voluntary. So, um, as we go forward, that's also another part of it. Right. And do you anticipate that when, uh, you move the the next phase, it moves back to Kansas City that will be participating in that phase yeah, as well? We're, we're just going to take it uh, day by day here as we go. Say it one more time. Adam. I wanted to ask you about uh, Hollywood Brown and Irv Smith. What you liked about those guys and how you see them fitting in here? Yeah, so Hollywood Brown is uh, <clears throat> you know, a good speed receiver. <clears throat> excuse me, he can play inside or outside. Um, and I, I stay away from saying a deep threat, although he can do that. Uh, he can play within the offense and do all of the different routes uh, that we ask. Uh, so he's a nice addition. And he's got some experience and, and production. Um, and then um, who was the second one? Yes. But uh, Irv. Yeah. 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 So Irv, um, is a, a tight end um, and kind of does everything pretty good. I mean, he's a he's a good, solid football player. He's a good receiver, um, good after the catch, good blocker. Um, not necessarily the biggest guy, but really plays a good physical game and um, kind of like what he what he's shown in the past. Uh, I think important really for both these guys that they're able to keep themselves, you know, healthy and, and rolling. And that's I'll be part of it as we as we go forward there. <clears throat> we'll go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hello, Coach. I have two questions as well. My first is, um, I know you talked in the past about how this is really 
more beneficial for the offense. Just uh, what is the defense doing right now? And because of the continuity you have, how do you think this time may serve them? And Sid will have a second question as well. Yeah, just all, only because, Nate, on the being more <clears throat> productive for the offense because they can go out and actually – uh, throw the ball around and, 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 you know, do that part of it. Um, defensively, it's hard to set up an offense and then have an offense uh, do whatever they do against you, you know? So just, uh, so I think this phase one favors uh, the offense that way, but at the same time, we, we go through this whole scheme evaluation in the off season, uh, offensively, defensively, and on special teams. And so uh, that's where, that, that's where you benefit uh, with with being able to just do that on Zoom uh, um, and or likewise in person. But uh, Zoom, it, uh, you can get everything done that you need to do there uh, with a video and and or uh, new things that you might want to slip in there. Gotcha. Um, and secondly, uh, <clears throat> all that Kadarius Tony is down in Texas, obviously with the rest of the guys working out with Patrick. Um, can you just explain what your message was to Kadarius in the exit interviews and what you would just like to see from him uh, this offseason? Yeah, so listen, I mean, uh, Kadarius is, is uh, arguably one of the most talented guys we have on the on the team. It's just a matter of staying healthy and being able to stay on the field. And, um, you know, you, you always hear about the reliability, accountability, all those things that go, go into it. Um, and so I'm expecting him to come back uh, ripping and ready to go. And it's, it's great that he's down there working with Pat and, um, and, and putting the work in. So that's, uh, you know, that's a positive, but yeah, no, I mean, listen, we like Kadarius. It's just a matter of having him on the field. Let's go next to Sam McDowell. Thanks. Sid. Uh, I'll have a couple quick things too. Uh, Andy, you've used this, this setup with Patrick down in Texas, or he's used it uh, for a, a few years now. What benefit have, have you seen of uh, the past couple of years doing this? Now, so a couple of things, Sam, you know, coming off a 21 game season, it's a short off season, as you guys know. So um, it, it's, it gives the guys an opportunity to stay away from here and maybe a little bit more laxed, uh, um atmosphere but at the same time get a ton of work done and also there's a little camaraderie that goes with it uh, which is important on the offensive side that the guys work and play together and kind of are on the same page and it gives pat an opportunity uh, along with the quarterbacks to, to um, be able to kind of talk to the guys about what they see in a little bit uh slowed down uh you know pace so um it's been effective for us the guys have come back in, in great shape and they've come back uh, knowing what their responsibilities are. And at the same time, they're getting, you know, that influx uh, of new and, and our scheme evaluation from last year uh, thrown at them by the coaches. The second one I had was just a follow-up to what Adam had asked about Rashi's participation, understanding that there's certain particulars you can't comment on, but can you get into it all or explain to it all the, the process of how it's determined whether or not he'll be part of the next phase going forward? Yeah, we'll just see see how it goes there, Sam. I mean, I've, I I want to get, you know, keep gathering the information from the law enforcement people. We'll just see see where everything goes from there. Let the process take place. Right? Let's go next to Todd Palmer. Or sorry, sorry, Todd Lebo. Wrong Todd. <laughs> Too many Todd's. Hey, Coach. Uh, wonder if you could just give us a little preview of what this rugby kid you guys signed is. I mean, and what maybe what the process will be like for someone who hasn't played American football to kind of get through your off season and, and see what he can do on the field. Yeah. So he was introduced to this when he was young. His dad played six years in at NFL, uh, not NFL, but the European League, and so. Um, you know, he's somewhat familiar with the, with the sport and he sure has had a lot of success in rugby. Um, and there's some similarities there. It's a contact sport and, um, he's had to catch the ball and do those things and run with the ball. And so we'll start him off at the run back position, get him to feel comfortable with that, um, uh, going forward here. And, you know, he, he's had an opportunity to also go down there, uh, to, 
uh, to Dallas and, and work with work with Pat and um, and so again uh, he'll get he'll get used to some of these calls and through our zooms and uh, the plays and and then we'll just see where it goes from there uh, you know and Dave will have an opportunity to have him on on special teams and see where see where that goes but uh, it, you know it's that's not an easy transition but <clears throat> he seems to be wired uh, plan. Uh, competitive rugby since he uh, professionally since he was 17 years old. So he's sitting there at 23. He's had a pretty good, pretty good career um, with that, and kind of understands the the professional game and the um, and and the mindset to, to play at, at, at a professional level. Now we'll go to Todd Palmer. Uh, hey, Andy, I appreciate it. I, I wanted to follow up real quick. Do you, uh, and then I'll have a second question, but do you see Reese Zamet, especially with the new kickoff rules, being a return specialist type guy? Will he be, he be in that mix potentially? Uh, potentially. We're just going to, again, we're just going to see how it goes here. I, you know, not uh, see, you know how Dave puts them all out there. They're all out there yeah. working on returns. So, um before and during practice and we'll just see where see what his feel is and where that goes and then i wanted to follow i wanted to look forward to the draft real quick and there's so much focus when you talk mock drafts and, and with the public on that first round but if you look at roster construction is there too much emphasis on that first round since so many of the guys that fill out rosters are actually not first round guys or even undrafted um I'm not sure I, I, I've seen as many mock drafts going on as they're going on right now. I mean, I know, but it's it's an amazing amount of mock drafts out there. And uh, I got to give the guys credit. They're all a little different. Some guys are onto their third first round mock draft, you know, uh, doing that. But um, yeah, so Brett's got a, you know, Brett heads this whole thing up and does a nice job with, with uh, making sure that, he's got all the rounds covered and there is a tremendous amount of in, uh, input that goes into this first round pick. Um, however, it also has a very, um, you know, there's, there's like a 50% success rate over a five period for these first round picks. It's, it's a bit, it's a bit crazy for all the time that's spent doing them. And um, uh, so uh, you, you've got to make sure that you cover the other parts of uh, of the draft, and, and and you're right. I mean, all the way to the point where your college free agents almost become your second highest percentage of make make it on these teams over that five year span. So it's uh, uh, you've got to really stay stay intact with the with the whole with the whole board. How you how you layer the board is so important, and stack it ends up being so important. And that order can be, I mean, one guy off, that could be your Pro Bowl player just by one guy. So the, the Brett spends so much time with the scouts and going in there and just uh, <clears throat> bashing it out. I call it the lockdown. He locks them in there for two, two week periods and they just beat it up in there and, and uh, make sure that board is layered right. It's, you know, it's a tribute to his dedication on that thing. So. We got three left. Let's go next to Sarin. Uh, Coach, uh, a couple just uh, kind of connected, but you guys always speaking of the draft. What Todd was asking about always seem to you know kind of be ready to roll if you didn't have the draft right. You usually are one or two deep at every spot. I'm curious. One at wide receiver does Rice does that situation because it's an unknown. Does that bump up your value of or your need uh, at the wide receiver position? Would you like to be a little bit deeper there? And then also, uh, I know uh, left tackle right now. Most people kind of have Wanya Morris penciled in there. Are those spots that you, you still might like to add a veteran because of those situations? You're all over this thing. I can tell you're deep into it. I'll get, um, so those are two positions. Yeah, we are looking at, but I mean, we're looking, uh, Brett's looking at all of them. So I'm, you're sitting at pick 32. So it's, it's a tough, uh, it, it's tough to tell you what, what, uh, what's going to take place there. It, you know, it's it's a great thing in one hand, on one hand to be 32nd because you've done okay, and then uh, on the season before, but uh, that's a long wait, and you better really stay true to um, um, you know true to the board, what's there, and 
uh, take the best player you possibly can, you know, at that spot. So, but um, yeah, I, I would tell you those two positions he's looking at, but he's also kind of going through everything. So we, we've got, we've got spots and depth that we could use really everywhere. And then, you know, we'll, we'll just see with the whole Rashid thing, how that goes, but, you know, we should have, when it's all said and done, we should have players in there ready to go. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Uh, Coach, just following up on Seren with the left tackle position, uh, you guys were able to get four starts out of Wanye Morris as you look to build the roster for this year. You feel a lot of confidence about him if he did have to start a left tackle and just generally, how are you feeling about that position? Yeah, I thought it was, uh, P, I thought it was a good introduction for him uh, coming in and having that experience of playing in four games. He has even a better feel now uh, for this off season and what's going to be expected of him when he, when he gets back and is put in that spot. So, um, you know, he's, so there's got to be an improvement. There's got to be an urgency there, um, uh, which I, I know he feels. So he's back in town here and, and, uh, and working. So he's, he's, uh, and when he wasn't here, he was down in Dallas working out. So he, he, uh, where a lot of players go, quite a few offensive linemen are down there doing the same thing. So, uh, he was able to get in that mix and, and work with those guys. So it looks like he's in pretty good, pretty good shape right now. And, um, I think he understands, um, you know, what it takes to be an every down guy at that spot. But again, there'll be competition and he's got to, you know, he's got to make sure that he, he takes care of business. Last one quickly to Darren Smith. Uh, thank you, Sydney. Uh, good morning, coach. Uh, Hi, Darren. Uh, with, so two questions for you and I'll make it quick. Are you finding more value as we're approaching the draft than, than what you all have uh, done uh, being, I guess, active, but not too active in the free agency market? I know you brought in Hollywood and you brought in a rugby guy and you, you know, resigned some of your players, but are you finding more value in this upcoming draft than some of the free agents that are still out there? And then I have one more for you. Yeah. So, um, well, yeah, we feel comfortable with what we've done there um, with, with, uh, with the free agency, Brett's always going to keep his eyes open on that. Does a great job in that area. And uh, I, I would tell you this part, Darren, the the ability that we had to bring guys back here, the quality of the guys that we brought back here, I think is a real tribute to, you know, Chris Shea and his position, his new position now and, and his guys. So, and then Brett for, um, going out and getting and we always thank Clark Hunt for this because mm-hmm. it comes out of his wallet and uh and and he he's been you know he's like I always mention he gives us an opportunity to to win and and uh in that area so um so uh, you know Chris Jones I let's not slight that one that's a that's a pretty big one and Dana is big in the same same position there Naughty coming back is, is big. That strength up front, I think it all starts there and becomes becomes very important for us uh, as we go forward there. So and definitely, definitely, of course, if you you know looking at three Pete as well. When you're <laughs> um, and one last question, this is by Rashid. Knowing what you've seen, the videos, the reports, everything that's come out of your conversation with them, do you and the organization do you all still put trust in Rashid with his decision making and everything? Well, yeah, listen, as long as he's learned from it, uh, that's it. That's the important part of it. And, you know, we'll, we'll take it from there and, and see, you know, see what takes place. But right now we're, we're just kind of gathering everything and, and trying to make sure we have all the bases covered now.